In this video, let's start configuring the Geekloak. So let's first log in here. Whenever you start a server, by default, Geekloak gives you a ream, master ream. You can create your own reams. The ream here means it's a kind of organization. For example, be it Amazon or Microsoft and so on. Let's create a ream right now. And here you can see an option to add a JSON file for the configuration. Suppose there are several developers and everybody needs similar configuration. It is not needed for every developer to configure explicitly. One of the developer can configure the things and he or she can export the configurations and share those configurations with the other developers so that they can import those. It just creates a JSON file and you can browse and upload the JSON file and the ream name will also be imported from the json here we are creating it from scratch let's give a name here type hyphen dev and it is enabled i'm creating a ream so here we have the ream here on the left you can see there are several configurations let's go one by one over here you see clients clients is something like the list of applications that an organization provides for example in the microsoft you can think of microsoft teams microsoft outlook these will be separate products of microsoft which is an organization here i have tied dev as an organization and we need to create a client for one of our application what i'm going to do is i'm going to create client here for quarkus application this one name quarkus backend application Next, at this step, you'll see if you want to uh, enable client authentication and authorization. Right now, I'm, I'll enable the authentication only. I don't want to enable the authorization. My first step will be to show the authorization within the Quarkus application and then we'll shift over here and enable this. If you do not enable the client authentication, it doesn't make any sense to use Geekloak. So it's better to enable this and you'll see the authentication flows. There are several authentication flows the standard flow the direct access grant we are interested in these two itself the standard will be something like redirecting to the login template of the key cloak and direct grant mostly can be used for the rest api calls because i'm going to implement the rest api calls we'll need this click on next login settings we need a valid redirect uri my corcus application will be in local and the port is going to be 8080 select this i don't need any other properties over here web origins is to specify the application uris which have access to Geekloak. For our case, it could be uh, localhost 8080, but I'm going to keep it as star. In real world applications, you need to provide specific URIs for which you want to disable the cause error. And let's click save. Here we have our client. We are not going to make any other changes in these settings. Here in the credentials, you'll see client ID and secret. The client ID for this client is Quarkus hyphen B and client secret you'll find it here you have to copy this and we'll see how to use this roles you can create role within this client if you want to provide some client scopes you can provide add new client scopes and all that stuff but uh, if you do not specify any client scope the default client scope that will be used will be quarkus b dedicated this will be the client scope okay the client scope here means it specifies the amount of role information that an access token can contain whenever access token is generated for now we'll keep only this much information here sessions you will see the uh, login sessions for the users and advanced will have some other properties which are not interesting right now so client scopes i have already explained Ream roles here you can create the roles for the whole organization you have already seen in the clients here you had roles these are client specific roles and ream roles are the global roles for this organization which can be used by any of the client which is defined in this ream users you will have the list of users who will have the access to this application let's create a user here sagar kumar and create so once the user is created, you have this username uh, which was given and you need the credentials as well. We'll create the password for this. Demo at the rate one, two, three. Demo at the rate one, two, three. I don't want to keep it as temporary because the temporary is on. 
it means the user has to change the password whenever he is trying to log in for the first time so i'm just keeping it off save and by default i'm not giving any roles for this user whenever a user is created there will be a default role that will be assigned to this user if you see here in the ream roles this is the default role and this default role is a composite role which means this contains other roles as well so roles within roles if you see here these are all the roles that the default role contains and these are specified in the ream settings here in the user registration and if you want to add some other default roles for your user to be added by default so you can just assign a role whichever the role you have created and sessions will show all the active sessions that are present for this user groups if you want to have a group of users to be organized in a single group you can create a new group here and then use that group and add users to those specific groups sessions it shows the list of active logged in users events we will not see right now Ream settings will be interested in sessions and tokens we'll see these things in the coming videos not right now authentication you'll have these authentication flows if you want to create a new flow you can create a new flow i'll just show you how the direct grant flow works if you see here username validation will be done first and then password is also validated if at all you want to enable conditional OTP and all that stuff you can do here it is not necessary right now here and the flow is also shown here here you can see the flow of this authentication process you can also use social networks as the identity providers user federations LDAP providers and all that stuff all right so we have seen the configurations let's jump into some of the apis 